Here's Steve Kaplowitz and Adrian Broadus. And with that, we welcome you back. Happy Thursday, everybody. As Sports Talk gets going here for the next three hours, we're going to take you up till 7 o'clock, and then it's going to be Chihuahuas baseball at 8. There are only four games left for the Chihuahua season. That's right. Things are coming to a close. They're in Vegas. We'll have that for you 8 o'clock uh, with Tim Haggerty, 805 first pitch. But, uh, Adrian, good to see you back today and uh, looking forward to spending uh, three hours. We've got a lot to cover, a lot to talk about, and... How nice is it when we could start the show with a professional comedian who also follows a diehard <laughs> sports fan? Yes, I'm ready for this, Steve. Uh, also, I love the fact that no one had Comedy Rocha on Twitter, so he's got that one there. Um, I love the fact that we're both wearing red. We color coordinated ahead of today. You were excited that I was back on the show. We texted yes. each other. We were like, let's wear red today. We're, we're all red, and, and, and Jerry's got a red bill for his ball cap it he's works. sporting right now. I'm so in. I'm in. It's all set. Jerry Rocha is with us. He's going to be at uh, the uh, comic strip here starting tonight. In fact, if you go to uh, Laugh, the number two, night.com that's laugh the number two nite.com bart reads comic strip uh, jerry rocha is back he'll be performing one show tonight at 7 30 one show tomorrow at eight o'clock and then he's got two saturday the 7 30 and 10 o'clock and sunday at 7 30 yeah great to see you thank you thanks for having me man. you are the first comedian okay Who's ever been recommended to us from Cody Decker oh, to come on the show? I'll take that. Look at this. Yes. I am honored. Uh, that's it. Cody's the best. That's great. I, I, I love that. That's, I have to thank him for that. And I want to thank you all. I didn't know that, that boys are back in town. Me being a diehard Cowboys fan. Was that for me? Did you that pick was, that for that me? That was, that was a hundred percent for you. Thank you that I'm somehow still haven't thrown in the towel when I already should have. Oh, I don't know, 30 years ago? But, nope, I'm still every year. I'm like, they're going to do it. This is the year. You know what the best part is, Jerry? You're like every caller that gets into the program <laughs> that loves the Cowboys. And that's the beauty of it. It's all Everybody's the same. And I'll ask you this, okay? Isn't Let's our start... delusion admirable? A but little is, admirable. A little bit. But at least, look, at least you were alive when yeah. the Cowboys had their run in the 90s. Oh. How about fans that love the Cowboys that are less than 30 and have to listen to I don't their get parents that. tell oh, them I don't get that. Like. I'd be like, I'm done with this. You, really? I, <laughs> why am I rooting for that? I at least saw it happen. So I'm like, okay, it can happen. That I, if I grew up, if I was like 20, if I was 25 right now, yeah. I can't, I'd be like, oh, the Chiefs look pretty good this year. Like, I, there's no way. You shop your you shop your fandom around a little bit. Yeah, is what you're telling absolutely, us. absolutely. I, no, I understand. In fact, Adrian is a Rams fan because oh. he's in his late twenties, yes. and you know what? I mean, even if his parents liked the Cowboys, he grew up probably thinking, "Ugh, not this, this is not this is not for not me." This. Yeah, like yeah. I, well, I, I had no choice because my first memory ever as a Cowboy fan was Tony Dorsett's 99-and-a-half-yard run on Monday Night Football. Ah. So I was like, well, I'm in. That's it. I, my mom was going crazy. I was like, oh, God. So I was. Th that was it. That sold it. Is yeah. this the year? Of course not. But um, <laughs> I'm going to say it is. I'm going to believe it is. I'm going to – I'm gonna. yeah, absolutely. I, but no, I, I don't uh, – I, I maybe maybe I th I still think on paper they should be one of the better teams in the NFC. Absolutely, but um, you know, paper doesn't play games, and it clearly didn't play that game last week against the Saints. Were you upset when right before the season starts, Dak signs the four-year extension? Did that bother you? No, I knew it had to happen. Okay, I knew it had to happen. Like, it's, what are you going to do? It's okay. Then you just you walk, and then you have to hope you draft somebody who can you know you let him go, and he's. I I know all the talking points. He's he's not good enough to make that much money, but he's also good enough that you got to pay him. And so what what that you you're left with no choice. So yeah, I think they did stuff. They had to do it. I know. I just had so many Cowboys fans not wanting to see that happen. They almost right. said, "Let him walk. We'll go find somebody else." They sure. just didn't want to. But you know what? Do you know how easy it is to say that? Yes. Do you know how easy it is? Oh yeah, let him. Oh yeah, like like finding a quarterback in the draft is just the <laughs> easiest thing to do. Yeah, that's oh, Carolina. Ask Carolina yeah, about how, that. How, how's Cleveland doing? <laughs> like it's just it, no, like it's it's just yeah. that's such a tough thing. Yeah. It is. It, it really is. But a lot of fans also say the same thing. As long as Jerry's running the show, 
As long as right. Jerry is going to be right. handling player personnel, sure, it's it's almost like he sold his soul when he bought the team and had Jer and Jimmy Johnson, and then that was it. Once that split happened, that was the yeah. end. I I dis I disagree completely. I think that Jerry Jones is when you have someone who is wise enough. To fire someone right after winning you a second Super Bowl back to back. I think pure genius. I think, I think nobody knows what they're doing more than that. No, the problem with Jerry Jones is look what the Cowboys are valued at. They're the number, that's, that's his Super Bowl year after year. He doesn't care. So if we're stuck with this and then it's like, I can't even get mad anymore because it's, it, it, we're, th- th- he's, he's a thousand. What's he gonna, oh, he's gonna sell it now? Hey, well, you should have sold it 30 years ago. That's when it, it's just, yeah, I, it's, it's, we're, we're stuck with it. Every cowboy fan is like Ben Affleck in that movie Gone Girl at the end. <laughs> You're just stuck. You're <laughs> stuck with this person and that's it. it was, and we didn't even cheat on him. That was the only difference. Mm-hmm. You know, that was, but we're just stuck. We're like, oh, have you, have you ever do? been to Jerry's World? No, I haven't yet. I, it's funny. I, I moved out of Texas, moved to LA, um, right before it started being built. So I haven't been able to go back and watch a game there yet. I used to love going to Texas Stadium, but yeah. Man, I I can imagine. In fact, you know, Texas Stadium in Irving was was fun. And I've heard that Jerry World is like Cowboys football just on steroids. We've been to the stadium just not to watch a game. We We broadcasted live from there. And they were doing we, we some kind of promotion just to say we're, we're at the stadium when it, when it was first built. Yeah. And there was like a Star Wars uh, orchestra thing going on at the stadium. And right. it looked massive then. And, I, you know, for people that have gone and Adrian's been a couple of times. Oh, wow. You just nice. get you, you get um, mesmerized by the scoreboard and, and right. everything that that that, that stadium sure. has. Sure. You know, I, so the interesting part is our partner station. They give away trips, right? We give away it with a, a partner of ours, 915 nice. Tours. They said this past weekend when you walked in the stadium, everybody had a off vibe like the vibe was just off in jerry world oh, we, and they then knew. they got killed every they yeah, yeah everybody kind of knew they knew they it was just you're waiting for that shoe to drop i guess that's a problem with cowboys fans now is we're just waiting it used to just be huh we'll be all right we'll be now it's just like when's going to be the moment when we realize up oh, not this year either yeah. that's that's kind of what it is to be a cowboys fan is like but then you see it happen like okay so the reason i'm never not going to be a cowboys fan is I, I, i'm a texas rangers fan <laughs> And I lived my entire life of just, oh, God, they're awful. And they, they want it. They did it. It's like, well, okay. Yeah, check that, check that again, box yeah, off. Yeah, every now and again it can accidentally happen, too. Think about so. this. You've, got, you've, you've seen in your lifetime Cowboys, yep. Rangers, yep. Mavericks, and the Stars. And the Stars. Yeah. The, the, you've, the, all four. You're it's done. The, the, my Grand Slam is complete as a fan. 100%. I, I'm, I, I, that's why I don't get as upset anymore. And I hate to say this uh, as much as uh, the, the Cowboy fan in me uh, can't believe it, but my favorite one was the uh, 2011 Mavericks because that was, to me, the most unexpected, even a little bit more so than the Rangers, just because the Rangers kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. But the Mavs, it was just, who's going to stop LeBron and Bosh and Wade? But this is, you know, and then that they, that was just a miracle. That was awesome. It was, and it was great for Dallas. But you're right, the Rangers, I, I just didn't expect it last season because I kept thinking to myself, no, no, no. They, they've done. They've gone there before. Right. They played the Giants and yep. lost. Yep. Something's going to happen, but it was destiny it's for the Bochy, Rangers last man. year. You finally had a manager who knew what he was doing. Yep. That's it. Like, like it's that that's all you, that that there it is. Jerry Roach is with us right now. He's going to yeah. be at the Bart Reed's Comic Strip starting tonight through Sunday, yeah. and uh, one performance tonight and tomorrow, two Saturday, yeah. one on Sunday. Um, the whole NFC East, though, look at what happened to the Eagles on Monday night. Oh, against, I loved uh, the it. Falcons. I, that's the only good news after the Cowboys <laughs> lost. I, at least they didn't blow it to Kirk Cousins. At least they didn't have Kirk Cousins throw up and down their field in their own. House. That was great. I was that was just pure bliss. That helped a little. But does it make you feel like even as bad as it was against yeah. New Orleans, there's still a chance because nobody in that division right now, including the Eagles, nobody looks look good. Like re- exactly. nah, uh, I mean, exactly. the Giants. Here's can I give you my theory for the NFC East, please? And my one of my best friends, Eddie Pence, is a great comic and a, and a diehard Commanders fan. I told him this. I said, "Here's what we. Here's what needs to happen. All the other teams in the NFC East, but the Giants, need to draw straws every year." And the loser has to let Daniel Jones light you up for 500 yards at home, right? So they keep him. 
That's it. That we just have to keep Daniel Jones on the Giants as long as possible, and then I think the NFC East will always be wide open. That's Meanwhile, right. can you imagine the Giants last week? Oh. Three touchdowns, and they and it's the like, I think it's the second time in the they history allow of the no game, touchdowns, and they still and they scored three, and they still lost. That's, there it is. That's the, 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 I, that's that's why I can't feel that bad as a Cowboy fan. Look at the Giants. It's like hey, yeah. it could be worse. It could so, always be worse. Yeah, and and yet, let's just see the Cowboys. You know, win their 10, 11, 12 games this yeah, year. Yeah. It's all about January. That's all that matters all that is matters. what happens and in the th- postseason. That's what sucks being a kid. That's, what, that's the only hard part about growing up in high school, seeing them win three Super Bowls, is there's no, oh, well, at least they made it there. No, we, we just, nah, sorry. You, they, they, and it's not fair. It's not right. But we're in there. We're in the same boat as Yankees fans, Lakers fans. Celtics fans, you don't want to just get there. It, nah, you got to win it. If you're a Cowboys fan, you expect them to win it. And it's, yeah, as unfair as that is, that's just where we are as fans. Jerry, do you believe you will see another Super Bowl title in your lifetime as a Cowboys fan? Oh, God. Well, this is a good question. I don't know. I would have said yes four years ago. But, and this is to bring it to my show in El Paso, I'm fighting stage four cancer right now. So... Now I don't know. <laughs> and you've been, and, and if I'm not mistaken, less, you've been fighting, but you've been fighting stage four cancer yeah. for the last three years, three years. right? Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's, uh, and my show is all, it's called Cancer Culture tonight and at the, at the end, all week at the strip. And it's, it's trying to bring some levity and some hope to this. But yeah, no, I, 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 I do think I am. I do think, I, I believe that. Jerry Jones is so desperate to win one more before he dies that they'll do something crazy. Something crazy is going to happen that he'll – but, yeah, I, I maybe. I'm going to go maybe for the Cowboys. I think right now as a Dallas sports fan, I have a better chance with the Mavericks and the Stars. You do. All yeah, right. I think. Yeah. I f- Adrian, what do you think? If you're a Dallas, what do you think the best shot is right well, now? Well, you got Luka. I'm always going to go Mavs. Yeah. I'm always going to go you know, Dallas. And I think that Luka, not only it's him, but it's also who he attracts, right? What if they get Giannis in the future? Dude, what that's if- the rumor. And, like, I I mean, and again, Luka's one of the – you get you have one of those top five or six guys on the planet on your team. It's all team. that matters. In yeah. basketball, that's good. Baseball, you know it. Sadly, I don't know why that doesn't matter. Like the the Angels had Otani and Trout. Yep, and they couldn't scratch. And then you just yeah. And now like, you watch the Yankees; they're on right now, and you've got Soto and Judge. Yeah, and they should. The Yankees should be fifteen games above the rest of the American League, yeah, not just their be. division. It's You're right. Just, I don't under baseball is so tricky. I, I don't understand it. But like, and then football that you know. If if your best guy, if you if your top six guy top six guys a quarterback you maybe have a chance but hey, look at you know, Mahomes and what Mahomes Kansas City's did, been able to do Kansas City was buried last year like oh this is the year they finally suck and yeah. go, okay yeah. I know it's yeah I, I'm uh, but yeah I, I mean I want to believe I'll see the Cowboys win one again um, it would be fun it, again I, again I was spoiled watching them win three in high school sure. thinking like oh they're never gonna lose one you know and then but, yeah but. It's a possibility. That's the most yeah. important thing. So. Yeah, you just want to have that hope, and that's it. Yeah, All right. for sure. We've got a lot to talk about with uh, Jerry Rocha, who's here with us this hour. If you want to get in, 505-6009. More coming up uh, as we continue. But first, let's get our first traffic update of the afternoon. Here's Charlie with the latest. All right, back here on Sports Talk as we continue with comedian Jerry Rocha, who casually dropped in our yeah. sports conversation last <laughs> segment that he's battling stage four cancer. I, just, I mean, I like to casually drop that all the time. Conversations in line at the store. It just helps me move ahead. You know, it's a great thing. If you're at the grocery store and you just want to, and there's a big line at the checkout, like, I have stage four cancer. Do you mind? That's great. It's a huge, it's really nice. There's a lot of benefits. I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't recommend anyone get it. But I hope not. I, but there are, there's, a, there's a few benefits. I'll the say, ER. You're the bell of the ball in the ER. Really? Yeah, you go into the emergency room for anything. They, oh, there's a guy with stage four cancer. You come right. It's like a hot chick at a nightclub. You just come right on in, buddy. So basically, no it's line. like you get the fast pass over at Disneyland. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man. That's oh, the man. only good thing. Well, let's let's put it this way. Um, you know, you've been a comedian uh, your entire adult life. Yeah. When this happened three years back, when mm-hmm. did you start to uh, get back on tour after fighting and, and essentially put this into your act? Like you've 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 taken the whole cancer uh, diagnosis and fight, and you've you've incorporated that into your comedy okay, show, right? Because that's how I've always felt as a comedian. I've always felt like the best comedy comes from taking awful things and making light of them. 
in a way that doesn't necessarily validate the awful things. You're not rooting for the awful things, but what you're doing is you're you're showing it that it can't beat you because you can laugh at it. Mm-hmm. That's how I've always, you know, looked at my comedy. So when this happened, uh, it came right off the heels of COVID. So I already hadn't been working for a minute because there was a lot of shutdowns and, you know, just, you know, and then when that, when the diagnosis happened, I, there was no way chance. I was, I was blitzed on chemo and radiation. Like there was no way I was going to go out and do anything. So I just had a year of just sitting there in hospitals, sitting there at home. And every time something wild happened, which was all the time during that fight, I would just write a little joke. Yeah. Like, God, oh, that'd be kind of funny if I, you know, like, ah, oh, that'd be kind of funny, you know, that'd be, you know, and then. By the time it was over, you know, and I could and I could start performing again. Not that it's, I mean, I still have it, but the, by the time most of the gnarly treatments had ended, and I was able to get back on stage again and perform again, it's like, well, I had all this. Like, well, here I can talk about all this. Like, yeah, like, and I said, well, why not? Like, I've never shied away from anything on stage, so why shy away from this? You know, yeah. and yeah, like that's kind of it's kind of the main reason I just started. Just it was kind of. It felt natural to just be able to just pivot right into doing that. And would you say almost that getting back on stage, mm-hmm. like you will starting tonight at the comic strip yeah. throughout the weekend, and, and touring and, and writing jokes, but being on stage and performing in front of people, yeah. does it almost give you that, that shot of adrenaline as you kind of go through everything and you realize, you know what, this is it's going to keep me going, it's going to yeah. keep me wanting to do what I'm doing? Absolutely. There's no... There's, I think the the most invincible feeling you have is when you're doing something you love, mm-hmm. obviously. And it's, you know, so for that, for those hour, 45 minutes that I'm on stage, I don't have cancer. That's how I, I just, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with anything. We're just right there in that moment. And yeah, it's, it's great. It's the best feeling for oh, sure. I love that. I think yeah. that's, I think that's great. I think the fans are, that your fans are going to be coming to see you. Thanks, a lot of them man, have yeah. probably seen you before because you're not a stranger to El Paso, are no, you? No, I, my, this is one of the first clubs ever work me, uh, is the comic strip. And, and so yeah, Bart's always been great to me. And, and this, this room's always been great to me. So yeah, I love it here. That's good. Yeah, I love it here. And sports wise, have you always been a sports fan? Is that oh, something you've yeah. gravitated oh, to since you were a kid? Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always football. Again, at being a little kid, just the way my mom and her boyfriend, who was like my dad, the way they would just go crazy watching Cowboys games mm-hmm. and, and my dad more Mavericks too. I just, I, I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't help it. Like we just, that was it. And, you know, and then so it always just loved, loved, loved watching. I, I, I nothing more than a game. If a game's on, I'm in. I don't care what it is. You're watching. I'll stop and watch. Yeah. Do you like college sports as much sure. as the pros? Not as much, but I do like it. Yeah. When you moved to LA, did yeah. you ever adopt the LA teams? Never, never. No way. I could care less. Yeah, I could care less. I hope they intentionally walk Otani these every at bat. Oh so my he, god! So, you he, doesn't, <laughs> so full, he doesn't full, get the fifty fifty. Full two I, home runs I, short. Yeah, I hope they just intentionally walk him every. every at the day. same time, LA sports fans are a different breed, aren't yes. they? Yeah. How would you yeah. describe the LA sports fan from what you're used to in Dallas? Um, it's not that different. It, they, it it's a different breed for most other places, mm-hmm. but Laker fans are like Cowboy fans. They expect to pull it. They ex- they expect every free agent to be theirs. They expect every year this is our year. You know, uh, same with with the Dodger fans. Those are the two big ones. It's Dodgers, Lakers, and then everyone else is like okay, and then college like USC, UCLA. Forget it. It's yeah. I don't even know why the Chargers and Rams are there. No offense to the Rams. But I don't know why they, they, no one, they don't really care. It's Lakers, Dodgers, Trojans, Bruins. That's, that's the big, big. And the Raiders could have relocated back to LA and that would have probably, that would have been, been, yeah, Raiders too. Absolutely. But there's a lot of Cowboy fans in LA. There's a ton of Cowboys fans in LA. There's Cowboys fans everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they they practice in Oxnard and, you know, Mm -hmm. so yeah, like that's, but yeah, there's a ton. So, I mean, it's, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of get, Laker fans and Dodger fans, like we speak the same delusional language, you know, we definitely, yeah, absolutely. But I also feel like when I go to games and I'll sometimes be in LA and I'll watch these games, fans leave early. Like it's a really good game and it's, it's tied either in the fourth quarter of an NBA game or, or late in the yeah, seventh, well, eighth inning and fans are already trying to beat traffic. A lot of those aren't fans. A lot of them. So, you know, Laker tickets are massively, that's a, it's a hot commodity. Yeah. You know, and it say you know, and so those aren't like the fans fan. The true fans can't afford those tickets. So they're at home watching. So you know what I mean? So that's where I kind of disagree, like, oh, Lakers fans are just there for show. No. The celebrities who are there to get looked at are there for show. Yeah. Right. But no, no, no. If they were 
if 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 it was a different situation, it would be yeah. The the, the rabid Laker fans are the ones who can't afford to go every night. Yeah. Jerry Rocha with us here on Sports Talk. It's funny. Uh, so Buzz was at the uh, Houston Texans game Sunday night. Buzz okay. Adams from uh, sure. the KLAQ Morning yeah. Show. You'll probably be seeing maybe tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, he goes to the game and he comes back and we were talking to him yesterday and he goes, God, it was so boring. Like, what do you mean it was boring? He goes, <laughs> well, there's no line for the first down. Like, he's right. so used to watching games on TV <laughs> that to him, the whole uh, the whole live experience isn't the same because he doesn't get all the same markers and right. all the same stuff he's used right. to watching on TV. It's true. It's it, it, I get that because like it, it, I you go to a live game now, it's more for people watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I do. It's more fun to just look at the drunk idiot over there. See what, what he's doing? Oh, these guys, they're fighting over what? You know, like, yeah, like that's, that's always far more interesting than, but I will say, and I'll, if I can tell the story, if I Please. can digress. So Please. my, my favorite live experience ever was going, I, when I lived in New York City, a buddy of mine who was also a cowboy fan, his friend worked PR for the Eagles. And he got us tickets to see the Cowboys and Eagles Monday night in Philly. Oh. And we were like, oh, my God. We're like, we're really going to do this. And it, it was like 30-yard line tickets, dude. It was like, we're like, oh, my God, this is real. And before we're getting ready, the guy sends us an email. He says, like, look, you can't wear any Cowboys anything because you'll get into a fight and I could lose my job because those are my tickets. We're like, so we just go in plain clothes. And we walk up. to, And I before we eat, but the cab is there. We're not even inside the parking lot. And this guy walks up and goes, hey, who the F are you two F words rooting for? And like that was just and we're just like cowboys. F you F your mother. And we're like, what is going on? <laughs> like He wanted to fight us. And we go inside. And we're like, oh, this is a nightmare. And we found all these guys, native Philadelphians, because they had mullets and they were they were in like Aikman jerseys and, and Drew Pearson throwbacks. And we walk up and we're like, Hey, we're and, and, and they had a bird on a grill. Oh and, my God. And he holds, he puts it on a skewer and everyone's already throwing things at him and screaming at him as they're walking past tailgating. And the guy holds up the bird and he goes, you see this, you F and F words. We're cooking an effing eagle, you know, and they probably did. Like they probably went and shot a bald eagle, and then and then we come up and like, hey, we're Cowboys fans, and the guys like, oh, you guys is Cowboys fans, like, yeah. They go, where are your jerseys at, you f and p words, f you, and we're like, there was just, and it was a crazy game, and the um, this little kid before like thirty minutes before kickoff, and by that we're inside the arena, and anyone is like, hey, who are you rooting for? We're like, oh, Jeff Tiesel sees the game, you know, we're just. Just like pretending we're German, you know, <laughs> and like this little kid came out of the concession walking to his seat and he had a blue star painted on his cheek and like 3,000 people were just like, hey, ho, wow. hey, ho, like to the kid, to the kid. And then the game started. I don't know if anyone remembers this game. It was a year T.O. set out for the Eagles. The Cowboys had Drew Bledsoe. It was right before Romo, the Romo year, I believe. And uh, Cowboys are getting killed. And throughout the game, everyone started turning to us and just pointing, going like, we know. Like it was, we're like, oh boy, here we go. And they just, they were just getting hammered. And, um, and then Bledsoe hit Terry Glenn for a touchdown late. I'm like, okay. I looked at my buddy. I'm like, well, at least we didn't get embarrassed. And then the ensuing kickoff, McNabb threw a pick six. And the Cowboys won, but with like a minute left in the game, we, and it was, we were just like screaming, like we were just like stuffing our jackets in our mouth. Like, <laughs> like the, and then the minute the clock hit zero, we just got the hell out of there. People were like ripping their McNabb jersey, the $200 McNabb, just ripping them to shreds, burning them in the parking lot. Oh my we God. We got into the cab on the way out and the cab driver said, I mean, the, not the cab driver, the cab driver was listening to the post game on the radio and the, the, the radio guy was like, this is so embarrassing. He goes, it always seems to be some story that validates what people think about Philly fans. But Donovan McNabb's mother had to be escorted out of the arena by security because fans were threatening her like it was Wow. Just, oh, wow. my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was what a crazy. story that is. Now, was that the, uh, is that the new stadium or the old it was, one? Was that, it was that, that link was like maybe two years, a year so brand, old. Like yeah, almost like brand, brand new. new. Yeah. Wow. It's a gorgeous stadium. I hate admitting it. It was gorgeous. But that's yeah, a, that's was, a great story. It was awesome. So if you want to go to an Eagles game, chances are just – 
root for the Eagles? Is that, is that the easiest way to say The it? easiest way is just pretend you root for the Eagles and then be like, ah, <laughs> oh, they got us again, you know, and then be like, oh, shucks. Boy, I really thought we had them. You know, that's what you have to do. Absolutely. All right, bottom of the hour as we continue. More with Jerry Rocha, who's at uh, Bart Reed's comic strip all weekend long. But right now, back to Adrian for Sports Center. Amazing play in the uh, Yankee Mariner game with, I think, Juan Soto making an incredible catch uh, as a yeah. ball looked to be touched by a fan, but it, he got it and uh, trying to. Incredible catch. Yep. Yankees. Not as incredible as your Sports Center recap, though, Adrian. That was hot. There Thank you. you. Appreciate you. Come on. I got you. <laughs> Adrian, did gotcha. Jerry's story make you want to go see an Eagles game? Yes. Let's be, let's be honest. No, honestly, if it's not an Eagles game, it's a 76ers game. I was just uh, oh, having flashbacks. God, yeah. La- I was just having flashbacks to last uh, or this past Monday night football game when the Eagles won. It was over. This game was done. Oh, All dude. Saquon had to do is catch that oh. ball on third down. Instead, they go for a field goal, which, I mean, what are you getting out of the field goal, Try right? You're not winning the Crazy. game. You're just forcing them to score a touchdown. Atlanta races down the field. They score right away and they win in the in the final minutes of that and one. I, I just I yes you can boil it down to Saquon should have made that catch but there were so many other things wrong with all of that just do run oh, yeah. run run it once just run it if you don't get it punt like there were so many they should have just kept running it to they pass should've. the ball and stop the you just give him a timeout like that like no it's, yeah it was oh man. now are you a fantasy football fan you no, play fantasy no, no, I can never. I will never. And mark my words, I, if you ever see me do fantasy football, you can call me the biggest lie. I can't do it. I'll never do it. I hate it. How come? I think it's stupid. Why. Okay, it's very easy. Because what if I draft Jalen Hurts and I have to sit there and root for him? I have to sit there and root for Jaden Daniels? Uh, no, I can't. I can't be like, oh, I want the Cowboys to win, but I, I hope uh, Saquon Barkley scores four touchdowns against them. No, I, if I could, if I could just pick a team, yeah, I do. Okay. Have you ever thought of being in a league and just deciding I will not draft anybody in the NFC East under any circumstances unless they're a Cowboy, right? And if I have a choice between the best player in the right. East or somebody below, I'll take the other guy just so right. that way I don't have to worry about rooting against, uh, you know, or rooting for the uh, for the enemy. No, I, I, you know what? Another thing too, fancy football to me is like sports Dungeons and Dragons. And I it have is. enough regular Dungeons and Dragons in my nerd existence. I don't need to add another D and D, right? Like I already play Magic the Gathering. I don't need to add <laughs> a whole, like now here's sports Magic the Gathering. <laughs> like no, I just want to, I just want to watch it and root for my team. There That's you go. It. I think it's better that way because yeah. I hear from fans all the time who are diehard fans. But they'll draft players that they normally would root right. against, and now you're completely conflicted. It sucks. I don't want to be that person. I'd never. There's no way. It would have to be a sport. Like they would have to invent a new sport that I don't care about, like some brand new. Like you know, okay, sure, I'll do fantasy that. But there, any of the major sports, even soccer, I no, I I want to root for my team. I don't not they have not that they have fantasy soccer. But they do. Know. They have fantasy they everything. They, they have really fantasy do. soccer. Wow. They have uh, water fantasy polo. Have UFC. Water polo they have uh, water polo. I liked watching water polo at the Olympics. It's right? Yeah, yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah. By the way, the Olympics was fun. You get you enjoy yeah, watching the summer great games. Olympic. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Was what really are your favorite good. sports to watch? What do you enjoy the most? Olympics. Yes. Oh man, track and field always. Yeah. No question, track and field is huge for summer. Um, winter, it's hockey. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Win- Hockey's probably my favorite in winter. Uh, and speed skating in winter. But summer, it's definitely track and field, uh, boxing. Um, water polo is amazing because you awesome. see how they have to stay uh, and really right. tread water and at the same time play defense and offense right. while they're in the deep. That's not an easy and they're thing all, to do. And they're all built like people you think would just sink instantly. You know, like they just <laughs> all look like wrecking balls. And it's just, how are you doing this? Water yeah. polo is inc- it's insane. Yeah. It's I'm with absolutely you. insane. If people go this weekend to mm-hmm. watch you yeah. uh, perform, what yeah. will they – like? give me a little – give us a preview of what the act is like, what the performance is like, without naming bits and different okay. topics, but kind of what, what the whole, yeah. what the whole yeah. Jerry Rocha experience is like. Uh, I'm going to take you on my journey through fighting cancer. I'm going to make it as funny as possible. There are going to be some serious moments, but uh, overall I think we're going to have a great time. It had a really great response when I did it here uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, it, I'm still working on it. It's still, uh, you know, like, like comedians are always tweaking 
So if you even if you saw me last time, it will be a little different. It won't be exactly the same. Um, yeah, and I'm just kind of uh, – it'll be definitely about uh, – I'm going to be doing my best to make light of a very, very, very serious topic but that I think needs to be made light of, if that makes sense. Now, you also had a comedy special on Netflix, yeah. The Gentleman Jerry yeah. Rocha. Is yeah. it still streaming on Netflix? No, it's now on my YouTube channel. So okay. go check that out. Just my name, Jerry Rocha. It's on there. Um, and I had to call it that because uh, I don't know if this – Okay, does this count for sports? Because I was, ooh, I grew up in Dallas, big pro wrestling guy. Oh, the gentleman Chris Adams? That's who it's, that's where it is. Cause, really? Because of Chris Adams. World Absolutely. class championship yeah, wrestling. WCCW, yes. baby. I would, so my dad, my mom's boyfriend, my dad would take me all the time. The Von Erichs were our heroes growing up. Oh, you that was one of the most, that was one of the most devastating days in elementary school when, after David Von Erich passed away. I oh. forgot whenever that was, whenever, if it, if it happened in summer break, whenever we all came back, there was still just this cloud. It was just, I forgot when it happened, but it was just this like, oh, he was like, well, David was like everyone's favorite, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, that, but I remember when I was a kid and my father could have, he could have ruined it all for me, but I, you remember Kamala, the Ugandan giant? Very well. Horrifically racist caricature. Glad they don't do that anymore. <laughs> didn't understand it, but, uh, it was, I didn't, I didn't realize Kamala was comic relief, mm-hmm. but I'm four and I see this guy who's, just destroying three dudes at once. And I see that kimchi, his handler, has to explain to him. And I'm, I remember thinking, if this guy gets loose, we're all dead. Like, no one's stopping him. And I remember I was four. One of my first memories, I was mortified. And I turned to my dad. I'm like, can we go home? And he's like, why? And I explained to him how scared I was of Kamala. Right then and then, he's like, dude, it's all BS. But he's like, oh, no, okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so that's why when I was 13, even at 13, for like 15 minutes, I was like, could the Undertaker really be a zombie? You know what I mean? I was like, for at least 15 <laughs> minutes, I'm like, it may, well, maybe he really is just a corpse who needs that urn to give him power. Like, I, it, it was, yeah. And Chris, so the gentleman Chris yeah, Adams gentleman is Chris the Adams. reason why you've got I just always love that name, the gentleman yeah. Chris. I thought that was such a cool just name, nickname for a wrestler, the let gentleman me, Chris Let Adams. me say this. We were able to get a uh, world-class championship in El Paso all the time, every week. Oh, that's and awesome. And they toured. They came here. That no was my, kidding. My first live wrestling show was in probably mid-80s, 85, 86. Yeah. And it was that tour. So I got to oh. see the Von Erics. I got to see the fabulous Freebirds. Iceman King Parsons. Oh, he was my favorite. Ice Man was Kabuki. my favorite. Yep. I mean, all those names. One Man Gang. One Man they were Gang. All there. Skandar Akbar. Yes. I was checking into a hotel in Beaumont one time years ago. I was doing a gig, and a promotion was in town, and there was Skandar Akbar checking in. I was like, oh, he was the <laughs> coolest dude. I was. He was like... Oh man, he was a nice. I remember one time I did a gig in Atlanta, and I got to hang out at uh, Diamond Dallas Page's house. Mm-hmm. It was aw- and Scott Hall was there. Man, really? he rest in peace, Jake the Snake. It was yeah. awesome. And Scott Hall had the funniest story because I told him I was like, man, like because I told him it was like like the Razor Ramon thing had that come about, and he's like, well, I kind of just did a thing from Scarface, and Vince had no idea what that was, and so he thought, oh, you're a genius, and I'm like, oh, okay, and then like, <laughs> and he goes, but I don't have any Latin in me, and I would go to shows, and people would yell at me in Spanish, and I'd be like, all right, chico, like that's all, you know, like, and but he said this great story where I said, man, you really sold. That stunner when Austin hit you with it. Uh, I remember you look like he got shot out of a cannon. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I wasn't even really trying to put Steve over. He goes, it was just more of a thing where, like, Steve was starting to get an ego about not wanting to lose matches. And I just wanted to show him, look how easy it is. <laughs> it's like, it's fake when you win to. <laughs> it's really, he was, he was, and, but yeah, like, so I just grew up with that stuff. So I, I, oh, that's cool. So I always wanted to call, it was either going to be that or Jerry the Barber Beefcake. And I said, you know what? Let me do the gentleman, Jerry Rocha. So. There's nothing wrong with Jerry the Barber Beefcake. Thank you. <laughs> so that was, that was all so good. I did a show. It was my 20th anniversary show for this. And oh, it congrats, was, uh, by the way. Thank you. That, it was years ago at Speaking Rock uh, Casino, and oh, nice. we had – it was the same night they had midget wrestling. Oh, yeah, sure. And with the with the midget wrestling came – let me think I can remember this. Okay, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Oh, the Hammer. Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Yeah. So the original Dream Team was there. Yes. Along with – the Honky Tonk Man, oh. he was there, oh. and then the other one was Gangrel, who was that character yeah, with the, the fake vampire teeth, guy. the vampire. Yeah. So they're all there, oh, and that's having great. a chance to talk to Beefcake and Valentine, who oh. was 
I mean, listen, you're growing up in the 80s. You're watching those. Those are heroes. Oh, without a doubt. Heroes and villains, the most, like, I, I, I hated the honky tonk man. So, and I was like, why does Elvis have to be evil? I never understood. <laughs> But man, the greatest, the honky tonk. Oh God, yes. loved him. Who could who could take a uh, just a, a fake guitar and hit people over the head with and it and sell smash. it and do it so well? And look, and looking back, I think he look had he known the Ultimate Warrior was going to come out to challenge him, he would have won. That mm -hmm. was his mistake in saying <laughs> uh, I'll challenge anybody back there. He still would have been the Intercontinental Champion. I'm anyway. I'm going to go to my grave but like that. I it's just it. I, I, I and especially as I got older. I still loved wrestling. I mean, we'd always joke, like, you know, oh, Undertaker's 15 and 0 at WrestleMania. And be like, man, you think somebody would watch tape on him? You think there'd be scouting? <laughs> you, know, you think his exactly. opponent would do some research? <laughs> but, like, I just, yeah, I still love it. Still All right. It. Uh, again, 7 30 tonight, yes. 8 o'clock tomorrow, yep. 7 30, 10 o'clock on Saturday, and 7 30 on Sunday. You mentioned your That's YouTube it. channel. Let me plug your website. Oh, thank you. JerryRochaComedy.com. That's, That's it. That's JerryRochaComedy.com. Yep. Yeah. I, I stream old videos. Video games on my Twitch and Kick and on my YouTube channel. Oh, do you Every, really? I'll do it after the show tonight. Yeah, I love playing. It's called Retro Rocha. Oh, that's cool. I love cool. playing old Nintendo, Super Nintendo games. And if you happen to come to the show tonight and you have a Super Nintendo or Nintendo game you don't care for anymore, bring it to me. Donate it. I'll be glad. I'll give it a new home. I'm collecting all. I'm trying to collect all the old games from my youth. That so, is terrific. That I never got to own when I was a kid. So. Now, and now you're going to get a chance to do it yeah, all these years later. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so much fun having Dude, you. Thank you. So look, can we do this again? Absolutely. All right, good. Absolutely. good. Let's do this after the Cowboys. I'm doing this for all the Cowboy fans. Win another Super Bowl to this year. Number six. <laughs> we'll come and celebrate. Love it. Jerry, <laughs> have a great time this week. Thank Thanks you so for much. dropping Thank in. you. He's Jerry Rocha, folks, joining us. We'll come back, wrap up our number one right after this. 600 ESPN El Paso, River Oaks Property, Schoolyard Sports Studios. Man, looking forward to seeing uh, what he's going to be bringing to the table this weekend out at Bart Reed's Comic Strip starting tonight through the weekend. And uh, I'll tell you this much, you'll probably never look at cancer the same way since uh, that has now become his main, you know, that that's that's the show. The show is uh, listening to that, and some will uh, probably, you know, you might shed some tears, but you're also going to have a lot of laughs, which is what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, this is a big uh, weekend for comedy here in El Paso, Steve, and this is a great way to kick things off. Uh, what, what a guy. I mean, to be such a good sports fan like he is, uh, to have a lot of fun with us on this show, and to have that kind of dark humor. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. What, what a combo. Lee Sterling, uh, speaking of comedy, he's going to join us next from ParamountSports.com. He'll be on at 5 o'clock to give us uh, his picks. Then we've got Colin Deaver at 6. He's got a brand-new job with UTEP Men's Basketball. And Alberto Wichapa is going to join us, bottom of the 6 o'clock hour, 6.30, to talk a little bit about uh, El Paso Locomotive FC. So as you might imagine, Adrian, we are busy for the next uh, two hours here on the program. Yeah, and I'm just going to plug, uh, because after this, I'm heading out to the SAC. Alberto Reta and Sebastian Perez Navarro, along with Paul McKinnon, all three of them are going to be on site just, you know, re recapping the Franklin America's game. It's high school football kicking off tonight. Uh, we'll have our featured game of the week next uh, or tomorrow, uh, and that'll be out at Excalibur Stadium for both those guys, Alberto and Sebastian. Uh, but you know what? I, I also want to really quick pu uh, plug this one. Tonight is our final night, a final casting call for the KLAQ Haunted Houses of Terror. That is our partner station, 95.5 KLAQ, for the Haunted Houses of Terror. It's taking place tonight at 6 o'clock, 13900 Montana. So the parents out there, if you got a young one who's uh, in need of a job and work eligible, 16 years old and up, uh, we would love to have anybody out there for the Haunted House and the casting call. And who knows, a star could be born over the next month during the uh, Haunted House from this casting Ooh, call. I like that, Steve. I like I like what you're, where you're going there. Well, I'm sure you've got some really good actors that are in place and some that could very well be part of the show as a result of well, what we're going to get a chance to see here tonight. Oh, I agree completely. And, you know, it's always a great time. We're having two locations this year, both on the Far East side, so the 13900 Montana location, also 2155 Joe Battle Boulevard. So that actually opens up next Friday. Really exciting for the Haunted Houses of Terror. And important to note that both locations are in the uh, east side of town. That's the big thing. Last year we did east and west. This time we've got two 
two spots on the east side of town. Correct, and they're both uh, far east, too. So the people who are out there on Zaragoza, the people who listen to us right off 375 on the far east side, they'll definitely be able to go out there for a whole, what, five weeks for Haunted Houses of Terror. It's going to be a lot of fun. Will the houses be different between the two? Yes. One of them, well, actually, we technically have three, right? Because at the 13900 Montana location, we have two. One of them is our main uh, 20 to 25 minute um, haunted house, and then the other one is the Orbeez one. So you actually get to go with Orbeez guns, go through it, and you're shooting zombies and other creatures that are coming at you, which is so much fun for kids, you know, and teenagers and stuff like that. You're telling me you actually get to use Orbeez guns and defend yourself at the haunted house. That's got to be a blast. Yeah, I, I think kids love it, man. Especially like high school kids. Uh, you know, anybody who gets a chance to go out there always has a good time. You get the scares and all that, uh, but you definitely have a great time. Uh, I will also say that our other location, the Joe Battle location, 20, 2155 Joe Battle, that'll be kind of like a prison break, like zombie type of feel. So, yeah, there you go. There's uh, the haunted house. We're really excited. Good. I love the fact that you're on board with the haunted house this yes. year more than ever. You are as deeply involved in a. You've been doing this since the pre-production for the commercials when you were shooting all over town. That's right, exactly right. We've been working on this one for a while now. Uh, shout out to Angel Munoz, who's also done a good job of uh, helping us out. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Oh my God, Shohei Otani went yard. No way, this is fifty. That's fifty. Is that fifty or That's is that forty nine? He had forty nine earlier. Oh my God, he has hit fifty tonight. A two-run homer. What a day. He's, he hit the 50-50 club just now. The 50-50 club for the first time in history. 50 home runs, 51 stolen bases. Something that, uh, again, one of the great feats in baseball history just happened with none other than Shohei Otani in Miami. Wow. He's 5-for-5 five five today, Steve, with two homers. Two stolen bases and five RBIs. The first 50-50 player in MLB history. Can you imagine doing it like that, though? Can you imagine going 50-50, going five for five with two home runs and two stolen bases? That that right there is nothing short of unbelievable. He really is. I mean, that's what he is. Shohei Otani, every year he continues to amaze us. Every year we wonder, is he is he going to be on a decline? Is he going to slump? Is, is, is there Lord. ever going to ha- uh, be a period of that? No, he just steps up to the plate, hits the homer, and achieves the 50-50. Yeah, that is nothing short of phenomenal when you really start to think about it. He's all smiles going into the dugout. Is he going to take a curtain call, Miami? Look at this. Wow. Shohei just took a curtain call in Miami, which is unprecedented. You never see an opposing player come out and do a curtain call in a place that's not your home stadium. But then again, when you just did something no one's ever seen before, that's cause for celebration. He's a face of baseball, Steve. He is the face of baseball. We are watching greatness Mm. before our eyes. This is so cool. I would love to hear this reaction uh, from MLB TV. We might have to play that later in the show. We'll do that. All right, hour two. uh, We got Lee Sterling next. Stay with us. Sports Talk continues. 600 ESPN El Paso. On the ground, in addition to some passes, uh, touchdown passes as well. Different, different. I think Rice is a much better passer, mm-hmm. and Milrose Tate, obviously, a much better runner. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. But, let's... but good, but good, good, good. I would actually take Rising over Milrow. Mm. Oh, I, you know what? Yeah. I, I wonder when it comes to the NFL how that, how those two are going to translate. I, I don't know if either one will do much yeah. in the NFL. You're right. And you know... is probably a backup at best. Yeah, and Milrow, he could be in one of those guys. He might have to play another position. I was going to say, that could be the same story we've seen with other quarterbacks in the past. Maybe a Josh Cribbs kind of guy. Mm -hmm. USC-Michigan will be next. Another uh, battle of top 25 teams with USC 11th and Michigan 18th. Uh, the Wolverines only blemish the uh, blowout loss at home to Texas, while USC right. comes in 2-0. and And USC five-point favorites on the road in Ann Arbor. So I'm watching the spring game, and I'm like, okay, Alex Orgy is going to be the quarterback. Just assumed he was the guy. For some reason, they went with Davis Warren. <laughs> That's what happens when you sometimes have a clown coaching staff. They just maybe they thought that Davis Warren was going to be the safer pick, but thrown six interceptions in three games. He was a no threat quarterback. Now they're going to move to a dual threat quarterback. I think Orgy's pretty good. Not a great passer, but good. And very, I mean, very fleet of foot and pretty big. Uh, he can run and, and get you some big gains running the football and also scrambling and buying time. 
Now, I thought this was going to be a, a USC call. Last week, I'm like, wow, this is going to set up great. line's going to be under seven. I'll take USC because Michigan's going to play Davis Warren. Now he's not starting. And then I'm watching the South Carolina game. The win now that USC had over LSU, just not that impressive. I mean, LSU's defense gave up 33 points to South Carolina. I know they're 2-0 and straight up and against the spread, but I think Michigan's going to control the line of scrimmage here. And this is a tough, tough place to play at. You've never played here. I know USC plays Notre Dame, but Michigan's a little bit tougher, more physical. Wrong team favorite. Michigan outright, 24-20. We'll move now to the... NFL, as we continue with Lee Sterling from ParamountSports.com. Uh, Houston and Minnesota should be a pretty interesting contest. They're both undefeated. Um, we're finding out that Jefferson is going to play, uh, despite being yep. limited practice today. And uh, Aaron Jones was a full go now as well. Yep. Uh, the Vikings have been a pleasant surprise offensively and defensively as well, while the Texans come in 2-0 and with that Sunday night win holding off the Chicago Bears, despite another subpar performance from yep. Caleb Williams. Meanwhile, uh, Minnesota is a two-point underdog at home against the Texans. Yeah, and Sam Darnold, that was my biggest play last week. I love the fact that he had been with the 49ers last year, practiced against them every day. So great, great matchup for them. And also, obviously, uh, San Francisco is out McCaffrey. And then during the game, they lose uh, Debo Samuel. Now Sam Darnold gets to play another defense, which he fares well against. Where was D'Amico Ryans before he went to Houston? San Francisco runs the same defense. So I think he's going to continue to have success. And people will say, well, when is the dam going to burst? Well, first three games when he was a Carolina Panther, he went 3-0 and straight up and against the spread. He has a much better supporting cast now. I like the coaching staff. He's got the better defense here with Flores as defensive coordinator. Jefferson will play. Jordan Addison might even give it a go here. I think Houston is a top-five team in the NFL. I'm going to go that far. I think right now they have the best chance to knock off Kansas City in the AFC, even better than Buffalo and a few other teams. But I don't think they match up well without Mixon here, without a running game against Minnesota on the road. Give me Minnesota here, 23-20. Final game we're going to talk about uh, before we talk about the website, what you have going on, Dallas and Baltimore. That's going to wrap us up. Now, yep. um, last week you picked the Cowboys to beat New Orleans 31 to 20 on this show. We now know that New Orleans has a much better team than we expected. And Dallas, uh, again, doubt creeping into Cowboys fans just two weeks into the season. Um, they're one and one. The Ravens are 0 and 2. Baltimore is a one point favorite in this game. Lee, can you actually see the Ravens going 0 and 3 to start the year? It could happen. I think that they have a better chance to win this game. They don't have any perceived weakness, whereas Dallas, I just don't think they have a running game. I think they should have gone after a better running back. So I just don't think Ezekiel has much in the tank left. The Ravens obviously down a little bit. Uh, their former defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, left. And they blew a lead. I, who knows how it happened? I mean, usually when they're up 10 points at home, that game is over. But sometimes you just lose focus and just can't get it back. Baltimore's rushed for at least 100 yards, 35 straight games. I think they should run Derrick Henry a little bit more here. I'm going to take Baltimore. 27-23 27-23 should be a great game. Man, that sounds like a great game. And, oh, my God, can you imagine from Cowboys fans if yep. they're 1-2 and two after their first three? Oh, good yep. night. All right. Uh, free play is in the NFL this weekend. We'll talk about that. And then yep. your world-famous Baker's Dozen, which is up right now at ParamountSports.com. I love when you get a chance to do this. Matter of fact, Saturday and Sunday, you've got it all packaged at a yep. price that um, our listeners just can't beat. Yeah, and I did something. That, I mean, everyone loves this promotion. I get more emails and DMs and texts and calls because normally you've got to be like a monthly or season subscriber to get my selections. But we open it up a couple times a year with a baker's dozen. So that is one reason. We've also had some, tw- and never gone 13 and 0 yet, but we've come close. We've had some 12 and 1, 11 and 2, 10 and 3 records 
on the Baker's Dozen. It's 13 games combined, Saturday and Sunday, just $97. But I said, you know what? I'm so sure I'm going to win. If I don't go 7-6 and six or better, I'm going to give everyone who buys the Baker's Dozen next week for free. I feel that strongly about it. And I also, we won again this afternoon in baseball. We had the L.A. Dodgers team total over four and a half. How easy was that? I'm going to give them baseball through Sunday for free. So, Baker's Dozen, 13 games, Saturday and Sunday, $97. We're going to throw in the baseball. And the games are ready now. As soon as you purchase it, a window pops open with all 13 games. Baseball will text you the games every day. And we still have one game left to be played today. So anyone wants to get involved, $97, ParamountSports.com. Also have a free game. You want to get the free game that we've got, and it's going to be a good one on Sunday. Detroit and Arizona. Arizona looks like a much improved team. Detroit, big game for them after losing. They're just 1-1 one one now. They lost to Tampa Bay on Sunday. So you want to hop on board. Baker's dozen, 13 games, $97. You want to get the free game or order it here over the phone? Call right now, 800-400-9741. Such great stuff this weekend at ParamountSports.com. Lee, appreciate the conversation. We'll look forward to having you back with us next week. Thanks, Steve. Take you care. Got it. You too. From Lee Sterling over to Charlie One, he has traffic. When we come back, phone calls and a whole lot more. We're with you until 7 o'clock right here, 600 ESPN El Paso. 1-2, Otani sends one in the air, the other way, back it goes, gone! One of a kind player, one of a kind season, Shohei Otani starts the 50-50 club! You know what? There were a lot of fans there. I, I'll say this. This was not, you know, hitting it into an empty ballpark. There were a ton of Marlins fans or Dodgers fans or baseball fans that realized they had a chance to see some history. And I'm trying to see where that ball was deposited and if, in fact, uh, a fan caught it. And... Oh, I, the ball bounced, and I can't tell if the ball bounced on the field or if the ball was actually retrieved by a fan. Yeah, that's really interesting in itself, right? Uh, you say a lot of people in Miami. I mean, you're talking about Miami, uh, a, a Miami audience where when the Heat are in the playoffs, Steve, like they're late arriving, like they're bad fans. And the fact that they're there for like an afternoon or late afternoon, I should say, first pitch, and then they stay to watch potentially history, all those fans were treated to uh, a glorious day from Shohei Otani and the Dodgers from this one. Oh, my God, you're not kidding. It was a crushing game, and uh, all I can tell you is uh, when Otani gives you the curtain call, that's even more impressive. In fact, here was the curtain call after Otani's home run when the fans uh, wanted to give him uh, an extra special tribute. Here you go. September 19th, 2024. How about that? That's, I mean, again, that's something you never see. You never see a curtain call, um, you know, in an opposing stadium, but for an, uh, for, uh, you know, an accomplishment like this in Miami. Give the Miami fans a lot of credit for doing that. And, and by the way, those could all be Dodger fans also calling out Otani. Those are not Marlins fans. Those are probably Dodgers fans, but still pretty impressive nonetheless. Yeah, that's a good point, too. I mean, how many? It's like the when the Dodgers come to town here at Southwest University Park, uh, how many fans are they are there just to watch the Dodgers, just to watch L.A., a big city like Miami? It's a great excuse for all those Dodger fans to go out there, watch Otani, watch this team. Let's go to the phones right now as we continue 20. 25 past the hour, 505-6009. You heard the dining deals commercial during the break. We'll tell you about Tony's The Pit Barbecue, which goes on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for that great dining deal. But first, here is Augustine, who joins us next on the phone lines. Augustine, how are you? Good, Steve. Good afternoon, uh, Steve and everybody. I got two questions for you, Steve. Sure. Who will win more games? The Cowboys or a combination of UTEP and NMSU? 
Oh, I think it's a no-brainer. The Cowboys, by far, will win more games than UTEP plus NMSU. Look, UTEP and NMSU... You think the Cowboys are going to win more than eight games? Yes, I do. And by the way, I don't even think think UTEP and NMSU are going to win eight combined. So that's the bigger story to me. I would be shocked if New Mexico State and UTEP win eight or more games. Those those eight wins coming from New Mexico State anyway, because the Miners... Ah, uh, they got demo and uh, uh, within the uh, within the red zone calling plays. That was just embarrassing. And the other the other the other question I have for you, Steven, and this is a baseball question. I don't know much about baseball, but with the investment that the Dodgers have done with Otani, is it a failure for the franchise not to win the World Series this year? Um, I mean, listen. It's the, one of the greatest individual accomplishments in the history of the game. 50 50 is unbelievable. But he's not going anywhere. He signed for the next 10 years. So you got to realize that you're going to have them in, you're going to have Otani in the middle of your lineup for a long, long time. That being said, I still think we could be on a collision course for Dodgers, Yankees, in the World Series. Okay, but who wins it? I mean,. With with the amount of money that the Dodgers have, you know, pulled out of their trousers and just giving everybody, there comes a point in time where if you don't win the whole thing, mm-hmm. it's a failure. Sure. If so, every team will say that. I mean, think of the star power if you have Dodgers Yankees. You've got Mookie Betts, Otani, and uh, Freeman on one side, and then you've got mm-hmm. Soto and Judge on the other side. It's it'd be it's 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 a baseball fan's dream because those two teams are loaded with superstars. Oh yeah, I don't think uh, anybody in the Yankees is making the amount of money Otani is though. But uh, but nobody's just, making just, anything in terms of uh, that kind of yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, and, and and one thing, Steve, and and you you saw the way Otani was you know was gifted that great celebration by the Florida fans. Did you ever see the the way Cristiano Ronaldo was? Well, hang on. Was uh, uh, we we got thing. we got news for you? Okay, breaking news: Otani hit another home run just now in the ninth Holy inning, um, <laughs> off of second baseman turned relief pitcher Vidal Bruhan. So he now has today. Listen to this line, okay? Six for six, three home runs, <laughs> ten RBIs. Yeah, is Otani that's exactly. the best player ever? Is Otani the best player ever to put on a baseball uniform? Listen, um, I'm sure a lot of baseball historians are going to have a lot to say about that with Ruth and some of the greats of all time. But when Shohei Otani finishes his career, he very well could go down as the all time greatest. Yes. That, but but that, also remember this: he's got he's got to do it for a long time. You know, he's got to do it for a long time, Augustine. There's no doubt about that. So that's the other key is, you know, you look at Ruth, and Ruth uh, really started hitting from, like, 1920 all the way to 1934. He never really had a – saw his, you know, his production drop. So the question is, can Shohei deliver this for a, you know, 10- to 15-year period? That's going to be the key because he spent the first four or five years of his career in Japan. Yep. Yep, and, and and Japan's not a bad league, so yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting for baseball. And I, I, for one, am looking forward to the Dodgers at least winning three World Series with Otani. If they don't, this is a failure. All right, appreciate you. Thanks for the phone call. Um, most baseball fans would probably agree. It's like football fans. If you don't win the Super Bowl, is your season a failure, Adrian? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I, as a Rams fan, if you asked me in the mid 2010s, I would say when losing was a routine thing, just making the playoffs would be it. But now that the Rams have a Super Bowl under their belt, for me, it's Super Bowl or bust. And that's just how I look at things for, from a Rams perspective, from winning programs like the Dodgers, it's a uh, World Series or bust. I mean, it's, you know, go all the way, have an opportunity to, to win it all and uh or else the the season will be looked at as a failure for to a lot of people yeah i feel like that's that's accurate i really do people just you know understand that hey you gotta you gotta take advantage when you have the chance otherwise you know you look you 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 don't want to say you've wasted 
a great uh, individual season, but you have. That's just what it comes down to. Yeah, no doubt. And I would also say for this Dodgers team, they were built for this window of this year. And, you know, of course, in the future and the young talent that they have and an Otani contract that will be, you know, a decade long. But at the same time, with this team, the way that they're paying their current players and the way that they were constructed, they got to win now. They sure do. All right. We'll keep things moving right after Sports Center. Bottom of the hour, middle of the show. Here's Adrian with the latest. Here's scored one in the first. One in the second, five in the third, two in the sixth, five in the seventh, six in the ninth. They currently have a 20 to three lead over Miami with two outs, runners on first and second. This is what happens when you bring in a second baseman to pitch relief. Steve, I got a question for you about these blowout games. Do you think it's, uh, not a part of the unwritten rules or, or part of the unwritten rules to be teeing off on, on, you know, position player relievers like Otani just did, or you think that's out the window at this point? Well, first off, let's officially welcome intern George to the show. We, we've, we've, uh, given him the microphone once before on the first day he showed up. And now that, um, we just, uh, turned his mic on for the first time without any warning. So welcome back, George. You're, you're here with us every day, kind of learning the ropes. And now you get a chance to chime in on this. No, look, my attitude is this. If you are going to bring in a position player instead of a relief pitcher to pitch an inning in a blowout game, then guess what? It's fair game. You know, if that guy's getting up there and trying to throw and Otani keeps parking out home run after home run, hey, that's it's, you can't blame Otani for that. You can't blame the Dodgers for putting six up. How about that's Miami giving you a uh, a position player just trying to end the game? You know, and to me, Steve, six for six. Just adds a little uh, icing on top for this one. A five for five finish. I thought that was over. I, you know, he he takes the bows and everything, uh, but going six for six just adds a little more sizzle. It sure does. It sure does. And believe it or not, you know he might be ba- he might be batting again this inning. Maybe they bat around in the ninth inning. Wow. After all, um, bases are loaded, and it's twenty to three. And I mean, there's if if two more batters get on base. Shohei will bat again. He could go seven for seven with four home runs and like 14 RBIs. That would be wild, man. That would be insane. But he's such a gamer, right? Like this is, this is the time I would never want to pitch to Shohei Otani. Even if I was uh, a position, actually a pitcher mm-hmm. or a reliever or a Anybody. closer or anything like that. I, I, you know, forget a position player. I don't want to pitch to Shohei Otani at all when he's uh, on fire like this. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, by the way, one of the things Augustine asked was who's going to get more wins the Cowboys or UTIP and New Mexico State combined I'm more impressed that he believes Augustine believes that UTIP and New Mexico State are going to combine for eight wins where is that from could they combine for four maybe could they combine for five I mean yes. I, I think I think anything over five or anything over a handful to me is um just a lot to ask for right now I mean hey they've got one combined they've got one they've got one that they do um, between the two, that's right now where they played three games each and they have one win. Yeah, that's right. And as far as the Cowboys go, they're tied as well. They got one. Mm-hmm. Only through two weeks, though, Augustine. Uh, Cowboys are on their way to – and that division doesn't look good. Come Let me tell you on. something. If the Cowboys win eight games, they're going to fire Mike McCarthy, and that's going to be the end of that. Yeah, there's going to have to be a lot of soul-searching if they only win eight games, especially soul-searching with uh, Pay and Dak. I mean, that would be the biggest thing. You pay Dak 240 for at least 10, uh, 10 wins right there. You do. That's that's so true. So, I don't know, though. Baseball unwritten rules are kind of interesting. In in fact, do you remember when we were talking about, on yesterday's show, I was talking about how ridiculous it was to try to steal home when you have bases loaded, two out in the first inning in a 3-0 count, and then you stole home and got thrown out and ultimately got destroyed after that. Did you see what happened yesterday in the Seattle Yankees game with Julio Rodriguez? Yes, that was just terrible, man. That was just awful. He's on third. The game is still tied. It's up in the air. Chance to win it. And a swing where the bat flew... And and Julio got so disoriented by the bat, he thought the ball was the play was dead. And what ended up happening? Austin Wells threw back to Jazz Chisholm at third, and they picked him off a third to end the inning. Like I've never seen that before. I, I mean, 
you you have to get out of the way for a bat, but you you can't just assume that if the bat gets thrown that the ball is that the play is dead. You got to assume everything is still alive. Steve, do you think? I mean, it was a heads up play by Wells and Chisholm, but yes. do you think that the umps should have called that like not a live ball because the bat was flying? Doesn't at matter. People? Doesn't matter if the bat's flying, George. Does not matter. In other words, the rules of the game state that even if the bat gets thrown uh you know and and launched during a swing the ball is still alive the ball was in the catcher's mitt so therefore even if the bat gets thrown it's still a live baseball at the time so you know what it comes down to is julio rodriguez just didn't realize the situation that was two days in a row that the mariners made awful base running decisions that ended up costing them yeah i mean and these are these are the games that the mariners need i mean these are the final uh, you know we're talking about the final month here less than a month here of baseball action everything matters right now um look at look at what, what uh the mets are going through right now that's true hey good news johnny Pareda, um a marlins catcher got the last out of the ninth inning so it's 20 to 3 going into the bottom of the ninth man thankfully gosh i mean straight they get the base is loaded Maybe they can make a comeback. Could be. Could very well be. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, 17 runs in the ninth would be the greatest ending in the history of baseball, wouldn't it? Or what about Otani comes out and pitches this one? Dude, <laughs> it's a historic finish. Let's that just... <laughs> would be epic. <laughs> Let's get him out to close. One, two, three. I love that. I absolutely love that. So, well, we learn something new every day. George, did you play baseball growing up? Uh, not really, Steve. I, I, I played in like a beer league when I was 18. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's fun though. That, yeah, that, that counts. Beer league baseball is as good as plays growing up playing baseball. Right. Yeah. And it was, it's funny. It was one of the few sports that came naturally to me, that and soccer, but I decided to suck at basketball instead. So. All right. So that's, that's, so, so basketball for you is the most fun. That's what you like to do. That's right. You know who else loves basketball? Colin Deaver, and he's going to join us uh, coming up at 6 o'clock in about 20 minutes to talk about his new job with the UTEP men's basketball team. So the longtime sports anchor, reporter, and director at uh, KTSM is now with UTEP men's basketball. We'll do that coming up as well. Stay with us. Sports Talk gets you ready till 7 o'clock. We had an hour and 20 minutes to go, and Dining Deals comes up this Friday. We've got tomorrow, 10 a.m., Tony's the Pit barbecue an el paso staple i can't wait to load up on this one adrian fifty dollars at tony's for just twenty five dollars i can't wait to get my barbecue fixing steve that's going to be so exciting from tony's a pit barbecue uh one of the best barbecues uh in town that you're going to find and has been a staple here in town for decades Meanwhile, if you go to our website at uh, 600ESPNElPaso.com and click on Dining Deals, you will see the voucher that will go live at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and they will be delivered via QR codes. Three generations, folks. Tony's the Pit Barbecue, the Vargas family. Whether you love their signature brisket or pork, chicken breast, sausage, ham, their signature hash, even chili, which they've been doing forever, Everything at Tony's the Pit Barbecue outside of their bread is homemade. And they deliver all over El Paso. So check them out. 1700 Myrtle Avenue. Tony's the Pit Barbecue and tomorrow's dining deals. Back here on Sports Talk as we continue. Colin Deaver will be joining us at 6 o'clock. He's wearing the shirt I want the most that I still do not have. I'm not going to lie to you. Everybody at UTEP has this one shirt. I've seen it. My eyes have gotten big since I've seen it. I even bid on it during the last auction. I was like, I was at some event, and I got as high as $110, and I got outbid on it. It was like 140 bucks for this shirt. And I'm like, they don't sell it in the bookstores. You can't find it anywhere. I'm old enough to know when those colors were relevant. I grew up going to UTEP games, so those colors really resonate with me. And everybody's told me, oh, it's not that comfortable. I don't really care for it. I'm like, shut up. I love that shirt. That is the coolest looking shirt with colors I've seen. And yes, uh, every time I see it, it like they, it's like it just gets rubbed in a little bit more that I don't have that in my collection of shirts. So you have a good collection of sports stuff. Great you know who, collection. You know, yeah, exactly. You know who does have this shirt is Alberto. I feel like you could trade something in your stash. Dude, you know what? That probably has a small. 
He doesn't have a large. All right. If he doesn't have a, a bigger size, maybe maybe it's a medium, okay? Um, Dude, I can't fit into a medium on that No, no chance. There's no, no chance. chance. Oh, I need a large man. on that. Okay. I, I can't exact- help you, man. I yeah, can't help you. I know. I know. It's like, that's why it's so frustrating. I see that shirt. I'm like, oh, torture. Torture. I love the Columbia blue orange with the classic old Peter Pete logo. I mean, that brings me back to my roots. That's when I was going to games as a kid, growing up in that building in the early to mid-80s, when those colors were popular and watching UTEP basketball hang banners. Like, how is that How is that polo not being sold at the bookstore? How have they not figured out a way to put a 65 or $70 price tag on that zip-up short-sleeve polo and get and, and just sell the crap out of it? They could put it for 100 bucks and it would sell. I mean, they could put it for maybe even 120 I think it would sell. But they don't have to. Like, if you look at that shirt, it's, it's just the color scheme is what makes it so cool. Right. And the logo is what makes it so cool. I mean, I, I think that this one should be, uh, you know, revealed or released, whatever it is, to the masses. I, I think everybody should have a chance to get these. These are, these are some of the cleanest shirts that, that are out there. For no, doubt. no doubt. There's, there's two shirts that I want that I can't get because they're only been issued throughout the athletic department. That's one. And then the other is that brand new black, yes. uh, basketball shirt that Joe Golding was wearing with the uh, Peter Pete spinning the basketball on his finger. That's the second shirt, and I'm sure Deaver probably has that one too, since he's now part of the UTEP men's basketball program. You know that classic Peter Pete. I think you could throw it on anything, any yes. color, any. It could be yellow, and people would buy it. Yeah, I mean, that's just how cool those are. My number one wish list, if I could go anything, it's still the swinging pa- Peter Pete for golf. That is the coolest. You like that logo ever? I love it. The swinging Peter. Golf yes, logo. yes, I need that one. All right. So I like how we're all just, you know, talking about, you know, shirts we want to add to our collections. So by the way, I've got I've got a zillion UTEP polo shirts. Most of them we've basically created ourselves. Like we'll buy a polo shirt and then have VP Sports throw the UTEP logo on there. And we did that 10 years ago. So I've got most of my UTEP shirts that way. Um, and I will say that one particular women's basketball coach has been overly generous, spoiling me ever since uh, she arrived at UTEP the first time 20 plus years ago. So you know who you are and thank you for that. But other than that, you know, like I, I I'm very picky. Like most of the times I see UTEP shirts, I'm like, ah, it's cool, but I'm okay. I'm good. But when I saw that one shirt that Deaver's wearing right now, when it was first revealed, and everybody in the YouTube Athletic Department's wearing it, I'm like, oh my God, that shirt is amazing. Because it takes me back. There's nostalgia with that shirt. In fact, the color scheme, most people are probably like, ugh, I don't want to wear that. I'm like, yes, sign me up, because that is what it was like when I was indoctrinated on UTEP basketball in the early 80s. Don't take Columbia Blue for granted, man. No. Looks so cl- uh, clean. How Can we why petition we have, uh, for Navy to be changed to Columbia Blue? Why don't we have more Columbia Blue at the bookstore? Yes. yes why are, why, why do we not have more Columbia Blue at the bookstore? They were celebrating the 80s team last year. I mean, they could have done a whole 80s line uh, with the Columbia Blue. Anyway, all right. Look, Colin Deaver has a brand new job. We're going to find out what he's got, what he's up to coming up next. So we'll spend the first half hour with Colin. The next half hour we'll spend with Alberto Wichapa from El Paso Locomotive FC. So busy six o'clock hour and the Dallas Cowboys update coming up in five minutes with Christy Scales. All right here, six hundred ESPN El Paso. Then we uh, tra- transitions in our 5 o'clock hour to Lee Sterling on our Longhorn Distributing Hotline, where all of our guests always appear. Longhorn Distributing, a longtime sponsor of the radio show. Your do-it-yourself, clean-it-yourself uh, home with some of the best uh, cleaning in El Paso, not to mention all of the uh, Alcoda power washers and everything that they have right now from, uh, you know, just all of their power washers and Hotsey and... Um, the McLaren line, just, uh, Lauren Hodges has got it all. He's got it all right there at, Lor- at Longhorn Distributing, our hotline home. And now, back in the studio, Colin Deaver, for the first time with a new job, UTEP men's basketball, the director of creative strategies. I like this title for you. I don't know what it means, honestly. Uh, a couple of people have asked, like, what what exactly does that t- does that title mean? And I don't know, but it sounds good. It does. So it does. Um, but basically, what 
what I would what I've been telling people and they ask, hey, what are you going to do? Is a lot of stuff that I did at KTSM for six years, the storytelling, uh, hopefully some podcasting, um, you know, reports, and then you know stuff that you've seen if you follow YouTube men's basketball on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. A lot of the stuff that's been posting video wise over the last couple of weeks has been me behind the scenes already. Uh, kind of doing some things, so we're gonna do some, you know, some fun videos and hype videos and all that, and just like I said, just uh, feature stories and, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was doing at KTSM just hyper focused on UTEP men's basketball. Here's what the release says: You're gonna manage the day to day branding, marketing, and storytelling of minors basketball. Um, You're also going to be uh, integrated into the daily operations of the team, and you're going to have a leading role for the program's creative and social media efforts. Um, Sounds right. You're also going to be tasked with growing the brand of the program through the development of video and social media campaigns. Okay. And you mentioned there's there's going to be daily practice reports, game recaps, podcasts every week with UTEP players and coaches, and behind-the-scenes projects to document the Miners campaign. And all of this is going to be brought by a man who, according to the release, brings a bevy of knowledge to the Miners. That's a lot of pressure. A bevy. First off, hats off to Mark Bruner for dropping a bevy in a press release. That doesn't happen very often. (laughs) And I like that. Like, if I ever said to you, you know, what's your experience like? Would you tell me, you know what, Steve? I have a bevy of knowledge, and I'm going to bring it all to Utah men's basketball. I certainly hope that that's what I'm bringing to UTEP men's basketball. And I, I just, I'm so excited about it. I've, I've been there, uh, working for, I guess, I guess the beginning of September. Um, the week of the first, the home football game for Southern Utah was my first week. Um, and I've said this to a couple of people. I would not have taken this job to work for pretty much anybody. There's three, three or four coaches in, in basketball that I would kind of do this for. And Joe Golding is one of them. That's how much I respect Coach and what he's doing, the program that he's built over the last couple of years, what he did before coming to UTEP at Abilene Christian, how he treats people, how he handles kind of everything that goes along with the day-to-day operations of a basketball team at the college level. Like I just had, over the years of covering him, I just respected that so much. Um, and when he, I guess he kind of found out that I was in town working, you know, working on some things and came to me and said, "Hey, would you be interested in this?" And I, I just couldn't say no. And so I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm excited about the team that we have this year it's been great working as closely with the guys as i have the last three weeks and we'll continue to do getting to know them and yeah it's just it's just been really cool to kind of have that inside look you've also had a lot of uh you know freelance jobs uh, since uh your time at at channel nine ended and uh, you've been around southwest university park quite a bit you've had some other opportunities i know to do so things you've you've stayed busy but this is really a, a, an awesome opportunity for you because one of the things you didn't mention that you're going to get a chance to do is also some radio play-by-play. It's important to mention this starting next month, October 28th, when uh, John's going to be uh, out of town. You're going to be heading over to um, Albuquerque and uh, delivering the UTEP New Mexico exhibition game for us on 600 ESPN El Paso, which will mark your first radio play-by-play opportunity for us and for UTEP. Yeah, and it's to be, I'm very excited about that. Thank you for that opportunity. This is the, it'll be the first time I've done radio play-by-play for anything since uh, 2013. So bear with me through the first media timeout, October 28th at New Mexico, and then um, yeah, that, I'll do that one, and I think we said the Utah Valley game, yep. uh, which is November 9th. Same kind of deal. There's a home football game, and Teicher's got to handle that, and so they, he's been gracious enough to allow me to handle that. So ho- hopefully I don't completely bomb the New Mexico game and get fired for the Utah Valley game, and they got to you know find somebody else. So I don't I don't plan on bombing, but we'll, well see what happens. It's not going to be me because my uh, little uh, nephews are getting bar mitzvah that weekend. Ah. So I will be uh, in town here for that for those festivities, and then we might even go watch the football game that same weekend. But I'm excited for you. That's going to be great. And uh, if you get a chance to work with Steve Yellen in Albuquerque, the two of you. Oh, he'll uh, you know what? Uh, he'll break you in within the first thirty seconds of that broadcast. Yeah, he brings a lot. He, he he's probably twice my age and brings all sorts of energy that I don't have. More so. than twice your age, maybe three times. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's exactly right. Shout out Steve, we love him. Oh my god! Hey, Colin, are you taking suggestions on marketing slash uh, social media slash content things? 
Absolutely. What, what do you got? No, I don't have anything right now, but oh. maybe I, I'll come up with something. I was just wondering if our listeners might call in or maybe even tweet us some uh, suggestions for you, Ted. Yeah, and I think that some of the stuff that we've done that uh, maybe pops out to, to listeners, viewers, whatever, what have you, is the, the schedule release. We went to the Don Haskins, uh, I think it's kindergarten through eighth grade school, uh, obviously aptly named after Don Haskins. And yep. we had Kevin Kalu and the new guy, Tarleton State transfer, Devin Barnes, go over there. And basically throw up uh, the gr- the logos of each school on our non conference schedule, and the kids would try to guess what they were. We got some crazy answers. Long Beach State, I think four different people said LeBron James. Uh, my favorite one was a little second grader who saw the Seattle University logo and just said soup. So that one was was good. Uh, we had <laughs> we posted one earlier this week where we just where I, I printed off some old photos of the guys, you know, from when they were kids and said, hey, can you sign this for us? And kind of got the reactions that way. So uh, I want to do as much fun stuff as possible because our, we have we have a great group of guys. Like there's, I think, nine returners from, from a year ago, yeah. three or four new guys, and there's there's not a bad apple among them. So that's that's been really cool is just how, how um, down for kind of – Having you know, having fun getting out in the community, these guys are, and so I think you're going to be seeing that with the program over this year. You also have a basketball background. You played it. Uh, you still like to play it in your spare time. You've you've taken a charge during a UTEP basketball practice when you were working in TV, so that helped indoctrinate you. But I'm I'm imagining that for somebody that's been in the business, but also loves playing the game and just loves the game, it also has to be just a, a natural fit for you to be part of this group. I've always. Uh, I guess to backtrack, I, when I was 14, journalism was kind of the the path that I went on, and for 19 years, that's that's what I did. But I I have said for a while that like, hey, if I could just work in basketball as well, like that that would be amazing. So to kind of combine the two, again, I'll still be doing a lot of the storytelling like, tailored for bas- you know Utah men's basketball to be, but to be working, you know, exclusively around basketball every single day for you know for the last three weeks. You know, I haven't felt like I've been working. I've learned so much. You find out how much you don't know about basketball yeah. working with basketball coaches because they are so incredibly in tune with things that you. I mean, you. Just, I, I I played. You know, I was a, in high school. I wasn't a great high school basketball player, but I was pretty good. And then, you know, I was on. A, I was a practice player for the University of Oregon women's basketball team. But it's just like the things that you think you know, and you think, oh, you know, I'm a pretty good player. You don't. You're not <laughs> the the level the the level of basketball IQ and acumen on the coaching staff is 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 next level as it should be. It's a Division one team. Yeah. Okay, I have a bad idea for you, Colin, but maybe this okay. is in the off season, okay? Maybe you can go one on one with some of the players and do like a live podcast, like like you're you're playing them, but you're also interviewing them while you're playing them. Is it this is a bad idea, but how how does this become a good idea? As long as I don't tear my Achilles, I think it's a great idea. Uh that that, that would be a lot of fun. It would be I would be uh I would lose five to nothing right off the mm-hmm. bat, I can tell you that, and I would be out of breath. The interview wouldn't be it wouldn't be a great interview just because I would be out of breath the entire time. I could see Derek Hamilton, you know, backing up into you or something like that, uh, putting up one of those shots that he does, or maybe a, a nice misses. step back from uh, Baylor Heb if he's playing you one on one or something like that. Yeah, Baylor's been looking good in the uh, in the off season as well. The, the Colorado State transfer last year, his shot's been looking good. Like he would, that guy's water from deep. So I I don't want those problems, Adrian. Could Earl Boykin still light you up if you yes. guys play a little one-on-one? Matter of fact, we actually played him, my rec league team versus his rec league team, uh, a couple weeks ago, and he, in fact, lit us up. I think he's... That's not fair. Him playing? In rec league ball? Oh, yeah. It's it's <laughs> a, it's him. It's it's a reg, assistant coach Reggie Miller, uh, assistant coach Kevin Kerwer, assistant coach Brian Sprigg. Like, it's like the entire assistant oh, coaching staff. On. And they're playing rec ball? Yeah, yeah. Like a league, like a, this is a city league. It's, yeah, it's a city, 18 and over city league, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be fun to it's, watch. Wait. First up, how many times can you say that you've gone up against a former, you know, 12-year NBA vet in, in rec league ball? And it's what's wild to me is how many guys on our team didn't realize who he was. They were all just like, who is this little guy cooking us? I'm like, he played in the league for 13 years, guys. Yeah. It's, it's Earl Boykins. So, yeah, it's, I mean, you could say it's unfair, but it's to me it's just impressive that he's still out there doing it and, and doing it as well as he is. So. R- rumor has it that he goes about 70%, and if it's a close game, he'll turn it up to about 80%. He still kills everybody. I think that's, yeah, I think that's probably about fair. Let me tell you a funny story real quick, okay? So years ago, um, it's the media all-stars against the Dallas Cowboys. 
All right. Now, I was on the media all-star team then. Um, in fact, I got to start in this game. And who was I going up against to start? I had um, I had Michael Irvin and Deion Sanders, and I was switching off on both of them. That's oh, what no. we're that's what we're playing. Oh, no. And it was supposed to be a charity game to raise money, where the Cowboys would come in and beat us and all that. We had Luster Goodwin on our team, and Luster Goodwin would have held the UTEP three point record if there was a three point shot in his day. And he played in the CBA, the old Continental Basketball Association, was a UTEP assistant coach with Don Haskins. Anyway. Game was close. It was tight. And we call a timeout, and late in the game, Pony just looks at everybody on the media All-Stars team and says, we're going to win this game, give me the basketball, and I'll, I'll get it done. And he scored, like, the last six baskets, and the Cowboys were pissed. The media All-Stars behind Luster Goodwin won the game, and I just remember everybody in the Haskins Center having this weird feeling because they wanted to see their heroes beat us, but at the same time, they couldn't root against Goodwin because his jersey hangs right. on the rafters at UTEP, and he had that same exact kind of mentality like, okay, now the game's close. We're going to win this game. And that was it. And sure enough, the Dallas Cowboy players, they didn't even stick around for the postgame handshakes. They wanted to just get out of there. They were so mad. I, that's wild that, because I think Michael Irvin could have played like some pretty high level basketball. Mm-hmm. I want to say he was getting offers, you know, from Power Five schools and just obviously happened to be one of the best wide receivers of all time as well. Deion Sanders played two sports professionally. Like yep. that's, that's a, those are two dudes on a basketball court there. I hit my jump shot, and I don't know if it was over Dion or over um, or over Irvin, but I missed my first shot, came right back down, had a wide open look from 10 feet. They tried to come out on me, buried that, got our first basket of the game for the media All-Stars, and that was, I was like, okay, done. That's all I needed to do. You were tired. That was like perfect. I hit my shot. I had the guys guarding me. It was good and had a lot of fun with that. And it was fun just getting a chance to remember in those days – Dion was probably, I don't know, early to mid thirties. Same thing with Michael Irvin. So all these guys were young. We were all young in those days. Right. Yeah, it's just right. a blast. Yeah. And Earl's. I mean, I don't want to make it seem like Earl's old. He's like, and he's, I think he's mid late forties, mm-hmm. in great shape. Works out every day. So it's it's it doesn't come as a, as a surprise to me that he's out there cooking people in the rec league in El Paso. Not at all. More in a moment uh, with Colin Deaver, who's now has his new role, uh, the again director of creative strategies for or strategy, not strategies plural strategy, the director of creative strategy for UTEP men's basketball. More in a moment as we continue. Let's go to Charlie One with traffic. Guys in as much as possible on Zoom calls just just talk about their um, their point of views on like not only their time here yeah we love uh, like we love to honor the history of this program as we should it's it's so historic in college basketball but one thing I think we do need to do is is kind of look at look to the future as well and like where this program could go in the next five five ten years or so and I think those guys like th- their perspective on like where they think the program can and should go is important to that but. If, I hope that answers your question. I can't wait. I think it's terrific. I'm so excited with what you're going to be doing with UTEP. We're going to be following you. You're going to come back on the show. We'll talk more with you. And, uh, man, the fact that you're on the uh, the team now from a you know social media, video, just a whole media standpoint, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. I think a lot of minor fans are going to be excited. I hope so. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And, I mean, if you'd asked me six, seven months ago, like, what would you, th- you know, or told me, I guess, six, seven months ago, hey, you know, in September, this is what you're going to be doing. I would, I don't know what I would have told you. I would have been probably pretty surprised. But, um, again, so excited about it. So thankful to Coach Golding for, for, you know, respecting my work enough, I guess, to, to bring me in. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's all about the team, team for me now. I mean, just as much as, as much as we can tell the stories of this team and, um, you know, hype them up and, Hopefully it's a successful season for the Miners, and you know we're we're talking about basketball, you know, deep into March like they were, you know, last March. So can't wait. Practice starts next week. Can be a lot of fun. Colin Deaver, thanks for joining us. Absolutely today. good to be here, Alberto. We chop up next on our Longhorn Distributing Hotline, where all of our guests always appear on the phones. But first, right back to Adrian and one last bottom of the hour Sports Center update. For the jerseys, lots of fans, not just here in El Paso, but from around the soccer scene on the national scale, love it. Some of our national media love the jerseys. So, you know, it's, it's been a really big hit, and we can't wait to debut the, the jersey on Saturday. 
Uh, I'll say this, too. This is a very key part of the season that really starts Saturday because not only do you have the switchbacks on the 21st, but uh, a week later you have a day game against North Carolina FC. And then, uh, you know, uh, I guess, what, three more home matches in the month of October, all in a 10-day period between October 9th and October 19th. So five opportunities to go watch your to watch Locomotive FC at home, but five opportunities for you to try to get into the playoff zone. Yeah, man. And look, like like I said, we, we haven't lost our last two home matches, and, and we're looking to build on the momentum and being able to play five of our last seven games at home. Uh, we're just going to hope to to get in, you know, continue to build on the moment, you know, the last game aside, right? Uh, the, the team had, you know, been improving quite greatly on defense, and now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, re- re-solidifying that defense, getting back to the progress that we were making before last week's game, uh, re- you know, getting the team to click again and then getting up top and then scoring the goals. And, you know, being able to have, you know, a big advantage of having our last game here in El Paso, you know, five of the last games here in El Paso, it's, hopefully going to be a, a big contributing factor as we try to make a push. You know, it's, it's a very difficult spot that we're in. You know, it's not a spot that, that we want to be in. Uh, but, you know, we're still mathematically alive. And, and one thing about this locomotive team, man, we're going to fight to the end. And I think that was evident last week's game, even though we lost to Indy on the road. Uh, this team didn't quit fighting until the very end. You know, we still got a goal in at the very end of the, you know, near the very uh, end of the match. And that just comes to show the grit and the determination that, that the players in, on the locos have. Wilmer Cabrera is still adding a lot of players as well, so uh, continuing to try to tweak the roster. In fact, he made a move uh, right before the deadline, which was announced a few days later. Yeah, yeah. So we brought in Malik McLemore. Uh We were just waiting for after the game on Saturday to announce him, but we did acquire him before that roster freeze. Thankfully, he's a, he's a big dude, man. I've seen him in person. He's a strong guy, speedy forward. Uh, he's a very physical athlete uh, coming from Germany. Uh, so we're hoping someone with his attributes can can contribute a lot to to the offense uh, in the final moments of the match. And then I will say, hey, um, maybe to your listeners or anyone that is a locomotive fan or, or anybody that's listening to the show right now, uh, one of our most exciting announcements of the year was made about a month ago when we brought in uh, on loan two Juarez guys, uh, Mario Escoto, you know, who is a notable Liga Mekki striker. Who has, you know, trained alongside legends like Diego Maradona, you know, Diego Maradona being a coach for him at Sinaloa. Uh, and then Arturo Ortiz, who, you know, is an actual Mexican international. He's, he's played a match with the Mexican national team and he made it all the way to the CONCACAF Champions League final with one of the biggest clubs in Mexico, Pumas. So we, we announced those guys about a month ago, uh, to join us on loan. And, you know, um, Arturo Ortiz, who's probably the more notable name, has finally got his visa and is available for selection this Saturday. So, you know, being able to have someone of his, his presence, his expertise, his, um, his veteranship, you know, bring coming into the Loco squad near the final end of the season should, should be a big help for the team and a big help for the, you know, a big, uh, help for, you know, the team and, you know, just exciting fans for, for these final matches. And, and we're looking forward to potentially seeing the debut of someone like Arturo Ortiz as well as Malik McElmore uh, on Saturday. Is Ortiz the kind of player that could have an instant impact, especially in uh, terms of goals scored? Uh, he's, so he's a defender, so we're going to be looking at him to be someone to kind of solid, further solidify the back line. That's been one of Wilmer's, uh, you know, priorities since coming into Locomotive. He wanted to stop the leakage of goals. And, you know, compared to the first half season to where we are now, that's definitely happened, right? There was, before this Indy 11 game, the Locos had gone three matches without conceding a goal. Um, so that's definitely part of, of Wilmer's philosophy, him being a defender in his whole career that's it's important for him to have a strong back line so that your offense can, you know, be a little bit more risk, take more risk and be a lot more creative up top because you know the people in the back are going to hold your back, uh, back line down. So Arturo Ortiz is going to be someone that, uh, if he, if he makes the start on Saturday, right, uh, we're going to look to him to, to link up with some of the other veterans like Wahab Akwe and Antonio Faro to make sure that they're, they're keeping, you know, the, the opponents out, especially against the Colorado Springs switchbacks team. That is, you know, flying offensively at the moment. Uh, you know, he's going to be someone that's, you know, looked upon to, to keep things steady and to keep things solid in the back. Are you already uh, selling tickets in advance for next Saturday night's uh, game or Saturday afternoon's game? I should say the pups at the pitch match that's coming up. Yeah, man, we're selling those tickets as well for next week's day game, and it's it's going to be a popular one. And we're we're bringing it back, pups at the pitch. It's been a while since you know 
locomotive and host to the pups at the pitch. So to be able to bring that back for our fans, especially our fans who, who are dogs, you know, and would love to bring their mascots and their, and their best, you know, little furry friends to, to the game. Uh, it's been an exciting one. You know, my dog is the one that's been featured in all the promo. Uh, so shout out to you real quick there. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, we we're excited to to have uh, pups at the pitch next week, and for all their fans to to bring their dogs to the match uh, for a day game. Uh, for any uh, you know the the terms and conditions in terms of like vaccination requirements and whatnot, you just head to our website eplocomotivefc.com to learn uh, what you need to know before heading to the match with your dog next week. Excellent stuff, Alberto. Good job as always, man. Great catching up with you. Look forward to Saturday night, and uh, thanks for giving us the lowdown on everything Locomotive FC. No problem, man. Thank you for having me on the show as always. He's Alberto Ichapa, folks. You can uh, follow him on Twitter at, all right, let me get this right, A-L-B-V-R-T-O underscore. How about that one, Adrian? I like it. I like it. Maybe we should ask our uh, Alberto if he'll throw a V in his, uh, you know, in his Twitter, and then maybe they can match. Well, I mean, it's like the V instead of the E. It's perfect, right? Uh, I think it's, it looks pretty cool. Alberto. Underscore. Go. Vert. He may, maybe he's got some good vert. Could be the vert. You're right. All right, we'll come back, wrap things up next. Stay with us. Final countdown coming up here. Sports Talk continues. 600 ESPN El Paso.